Welcome to our detailed guide on the Gibson approach for trochanteric flip osteotomy. This surgical technique is essential for accessing the femoral head and acetabulum, providing a comprehensive view for effective treatment. The modified Gibson approach involves an incision anterior to the gluteus maximus, allowing exposure to the anterior inferior iliac spine. This technique requires lateral positioning and hip flexion for optimal access during surgery. Begin the skin incision halfway between the iliac crest and the greater trochanter. Extend it below the vastus ridge, especially in larger patients, to ensure adequate exposure for the procedure. Deepen the incision through subcutaneous fat. Delineate the Gibson interval between the gluteus maximus and medius. This is accomplished more easily in the proximal portion of the wound. Continue this facial incision distally to split the iliotibial tract longitudinally. In some cases, it may be necessary to release a portion of the gluteus maximus, tenderness insertion onto the femur in the distal portion of the wound. This facilitates posterior retraction in the larger patient. Mobilize the gluteus medius fascia with the gluteus maximus muscle belly, allowing preservation of important vascular supply from the superior gluteal artery. Two vascular landmarks assist in the identification of external rotator anatomy. The trochanteric anastomosis communicates with the ascending branch of the medial femoral circumflex artery at the cranial border of the quadratus femoris. The second landmark is provided by the inferior gluteal artery branch, which traverses the inferior border of the piriformis tendon. This vessel also anastomoses with the ascending medial femoral circumflex artery. Locate the sciatic nerve posterior to the quadratus femoris. In cases of bifid nerves or anomalies, consider releasing the piriformis to prevent nerve traction during femoral head dislocation. Develop the piriformis interval by retracting the piriformis inferiorly and the minimus superiorly. This careful mobilization avoids injury to the superior gluteal neurovascular bundle. Prepare the plane of the trochanteric osteotomy by cauterizing the trochanteric anastomotic vessels. It may be useful to pre-drill the trochanter for subsequent reattachment with screws before the osteotomy. Perform the osteotomy from the tip of the trochanter to the base of the vastus ridge using a saline-cooled oscillating saw. Leave a small portion of the medius tendon temporarily attached to the intact proximal femur until the trochanter can be mobilized. This provides an additional aid to prevent injury to the retinacular vessels caused by an excessively thick osteotomy. Anterior exposure and mobilization of gluteus minimus. Incise the vastus lateralis fascia from the vastus ridge distally a distance of 5-8 cm to allow extraperiosteal mobilization of the proximal vastus lateralis muscle belly with the trochanteric segment. Evert the trochanter progressively with a Hohmann retractor placed over the anterior aspect of the greater trochanter. Now, release the small remaining gluteus medius attachment to the intact trochanteric ridge. At times, the piriformis insertion will be partially attached to the mobile trochanteric fragment. This should be released as the trochanter is everted. Flex and externally rotate the hip to improve anterior exposure with the Cobb elevator. This allows complete mobilization of the gluteus minimus from the supraacetabular surface along the superior capsule to its femoral insertion along the anterior aspect of the trochanter. The minimus insertion may also straddle the trochanter osteotomy. If so, release it from the intact proximal femur to allow full trochanteric mobilization. Hemicircumferential view of the acetabular rim. Mobilize the proximal portion of the vastus intermedius to expose the anterior capsule. Once this is achieved, a hemicircumferential view of the acetabular rim and capsule is provided. This starts posterior and inferior to the retracted piriformis tendon and extends anteriorly around the acetabulum to the level of the reflected head of the rectus. Capsulotomy. Intra-articular visualization is provided by a Z-shaped capsulotomy. The capsular incision must remain anterior to the lesser trochanter to avoid damaging the medial femoral circumflex artery. This aids reduction of fractures that do not have a posterior or superior wall component. Retraction sutures are useful. Capsulotomy in the presence of a posterior wall fragment. When a posterior wall fracture is present, the capsular pedicle to the wall fragments must be preserved. Modify the capsulotomy to incorporate the posterior wall at its margin.
mobilize and retract the wall fragment is to allow joint visualization. The labrum is typically intact at the anterior aspect of the wall fragment, thus retract the fragment anteriorly as illustrated. Articular exposure is accessed through the fracture line with femoral distraction. When the reconstruction is completed, close the capsule loosely to allow drainage of any secondary hemothrosis. Reattach the trochanter with lag screws. The screw diameter depends on bone density. Repair the vastus lateralis fascia and reapproximate the short rotator tendons. Place deep drains as needed. Repair the gluteus maximus tendon and lastly close the iliotibial tract and gluteal fascia. Subcutaneous drains follow as appropriate and subcutaneous and skin closure are completed. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Orthopedics and trauma in YouTube.